Far-right Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene joked over the weekend that if she and former Trump advisor Steve Bannon had been in charge of the insurrection on January 6th, they would have been armed and they would have won. The comments come as Greene prepares to take on an influential role in the new GOP majority in the House. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As we've been discussing for the past few weeks, the GOP performance in November's midterm elections was one of the worst outcomes for an opposition party in the last 100 years of American politics. For example, not a single Democratic incumbent in the Senate lost re-election despite running in battleground states like Georgia, Nevada, New Hampshire, and Arizona. In fact, Senate Democratic incumbents went a perfect 14-0 in the midterms. That's the best performance for them or a president on any party. Since 1934, that's right, the last time Republicans did this badly was the Great Depression, and the Great Depression is where Donald Trump now founds himself. The dude, <laughs> the dude is a recluse now. He doesn't go anywhere. Spends all his time moping around his Palm Beach hotel like a ghost from a Stephen King novel where the ghost's too lazy to scare anyone. <laughs> Here's Donald and also Boo. Boo, as they say, Boo, did I scare you? Did you hear me? Did you hear me lumbering down the hallway with loose change jangling in the pockets of my giant coat? <laughs> You're not scared at all? Well, that's too bad, because my head is stuck in this door. <laughs> so if you wouldn't mind, could you butter up my neck so I can slip out and be on my way? <laughs> also, red rum. We love red rum, don't we, folks? <laughs> People say it's murder backwards. I don't see it. <laughs> the GOP performance was so bad that even Donald Trump, a man who craves the spotlight more than he craves food and water, or I guess food and Diet Coke, has essentially <laughs> been forced into isolation, as the Washington Post reported. Since announcing his 2024 presidential bid three weeks ago at Mar-a-Lago, Donald Trump has barely left his private South Florida club except to play golf at his course across Lake Worth Lagoon. And you know what? Fine, he's a 76-year-old former business idiot from Queens. That's what he should be doing. Playing golf in Florida and watching Yellowstone on an 80-inch TV with his remotes Velcroed to the coffee table. This <laughs> is what keeps him preoccupied, just shuttling him back and forth between his golf course and Mar-a-Lago. That's a win for everyone. Hell, let's use taxpayer dollars to build a high-speed rail line that only he can use. Or if a high-speed rail is too expensive, we can just put cannons on each side of the lake to launch him back and forth. <laughs> also, I want to emphasize again, Trump's isolation started after he announced he was running for president again. It's one thing to say, I just lost my re-election bid, I'm gonna take some time to myself and then go into seclusion, but it's crazy to do it after announcing you're running for the most powerful office in the world. Probably just lies in bed all day with noise-canceling headphones on, listening to his old speeches. Yet I know windmills very much. They're noisy, they kill the birds. You wanna see a bird graveyard? Go under a windmill someday. <laughs> Melania is standing at the door trying to get him to come out for dinner. Donald, you have to eat. You have to eat, Donald. When I try and slide the hamburger under the door, the top of the bun comes off. <laughs> it's getting ketchup all over the door. Donald! <laughs> so now Republicans are trying to figure out what happened. Some are playing the blame game and pointing fingers at each other. For example, conservatives have been saying they lost because they don't use mail balloting like Democrats, although they can't quite seem to figure out whose fault that is. We need to not just compete for votes, for ballots. We need to compete for ballots. If we don't bank ballots early, we're going to keep right, losing. But we didn't. This that's not, but we didn't. But we this... didn't do it in 2020, because everyone said don't vote early, because that's corrupt. Not so, everyone. Well, yes, uh, well big, a lot of people did people at the did. very top of the Republican Party. Yes. I think Republicans have been unwilling, for whatever reason, reluctant, resistant, to voting early and voting by mail. Is it really a mystery to you guys? These two would make such terrible detectives on Law & Order. Weird! This guy's just lying on the floor for whatever reason. Excuse me, sir! Who murdered you? He's not gonna talk. This is gonna be a tough nut to crack. <laughs> but now that more data is coming in about who voted in the midterms, it turns out Republicans didn't actually have a turnout problem. They had a candidate problem. In state after state, the final turnout data shows that registered Republicans turned out at a higher rate, and in some places, a much higher rate, than registered Democrats, including in many of the states where Republicans were dealt some of their most embarrassing losses. Instead, high-profile Republicans like Herschel Walker in Georgia or Blake Masters in Arizona lost because Republican-leaning voters decided to cast ballots for Democrats. Even Republican voters couldn't bring themselves to vote for Republican candidates. And you know why? They all tried to be Trump, but only Trump can be Trump. Yes, Trump is a monstrous sociopath, but 
He was able to conceal that reality from some voters by also being a sweaty, bumbling oaf who would ramble about sexy New York yacht parties in the 80s to an audience of Boy Scouts or dance to the village people when he went on stage <laughs> and complain nonstop at rallies about how low water pressure was causing America's toilets not to flush. That same shtick doesn't work for other Republicans or other Democrats or literally any other human being alive. Like, remember Herschel Walker's weird rant about vampires and werewolves that turned off so many voters? The other night I was watching this movie, I was watching this movie called Fright Night, Freak Night, or some type of night, but it was about vampires. I don't know if you know vampires and cool people, are they not? But I'm gonna tell you something that I found out. A werewolf can kill a vampire, did you know that? I never knew that, so I didn't want to be a vampire anymore, I wanted to be a werewolf. When Walker said that, everyone was like, what the but if you imagine Trump doing the same bit, you can almost see it working. The other night, I was watching Freak Night or Fright Night or some kind of night. We all love the freaks and the frights, don't we, folks? And, and it was about vampires, and I said to myself, vampires are some cool people, are they not? It's so true, and you're hearing it more and more. Some of my best friends are vampires, except... <laughs> except the one I know loves garlic. It's funny, it's the opposite, but then... I found out werewolves can kill vampires. The fake news, they won't tell you that. They want you to think vampires are more powerful than werewolves, but it's hoax. <laughs> because the sun comes out every day, but it's very tricky to find a silver bullet because every bullet looks silver, but then you shoot the werewolf and he keeps coming and you say, uh-oh. I don't think that bullet was silver. It's very unfair. It's very unfair when you get the bullet that looks silver, but isn't silver. It's very unfair how they're treating me. <laughs> how they're treating me with the bullets that look silver than I can. <laughs> of course, my favorite werewolf is my son, Don Jr. <laughs> Republicans thought they could keep just doing Trump's routine, but even their own voters rejected it, resulting in yet another repudiation at the ballot box and a historic performance by Democrats. And yet, some of the GOP's most prominent politicians are still leaning further in the direction of MAGA extremism after it was rejected by voters. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, for example, appeared at a Republican gala in Manhattan over the weekend and apparently decided that one of the biggest issues facing Americans right now is the availability of sex toys at department stores. By the way, you can pick up a butt plug or a dildo at Target and CBS nowadays. I don't even know how we got here. <laughs> Sorry, I may still be finishing your dessert. I apologize. Yeah. yeah, no one wants to hear about butt plugs and dildos during dessert, especially on a night when the dessert is banana split. <laughs> also, even if they do sell those items, I can't imagine they're easy to get. I mean, you can't even pick up toothpaste at CVS without pushing the little button and waiting for the world's sleepiest person to shuffle over and unlock the case. Can you imagine going in for a dildo and pushing the button? Customer needs help in the dildo aisle. <laughs> it's not for me. It's not for my wife either. She's very satisfied. It's for um, it's for a secret Santa thing at the office. Yeah, yeah. I I look like Seth Meyers. I hear that a lot, but I am not. I get that a lot. I think he looks like. I think a lot of people look like him. And let's not forget, this person is going to have actual power in the House GOP majority next year. GOP leader. Kevin McCarthy has essentially made a pact with Green and other extremists to keep them happy and let them run wild in exchange for their votes. And part of that pact means she'll be allowed to serve on committees again, which she was barred from doing by Democrats after a series of bigoted and inflammatory remarks. Marjorie Taylor Greene says she wants a seat on the Oversight Committee. Are you okay with that? Would you support that despite her history of inflammatory remarks, denying the 2020 election? Look, Marjorie Greene, is she going to get reelected? She's going to have committees to set it on. Marjorie Greene is going to have committees, yes. She, she's duly elected by her yeah. district and has a right to serve. I'm looking forward to Republicans taking back control in the House. And I'm looking forward to serving on committees. It's definitely a red flag anytime someone says the words, I'm looking forward to serving on committees, with that much devious glee. She's <laughs> got the energy of a PTA president who's going to use her power to blackmail her enemies. That's right, Pam. I'm back on the bake sale committee, and everyone thinks your gluten-free brownies taste like a... Butt plug or a dildo. <laughs> Hope I didn't ruin your dessert, Pam. <laughs> also, what's with the shades, Officer Cartman? <laughs> she looks like someone who would try to pull you over despite not being a cop. Do you know how fast you were going? Yeah, like 45 and a 50. Well, I need you to speed it up. I got committee meetings to get to. <laughs> Somehow... 
That was not the most bizarre thing Green said at the gala. She also joked that if she and Trump ally Steve Bannon, who was also present at the event, had been in charge of the attempt to overturn the election results on January 6th, they would have won because they would have had weapons. Then January 6th happens, and next thing you know, I organized the whole thing along with Steve Bannon here. And I want to tell you something. If Steve Bannon and I had organized that, we would have won. <laughs> Not to mention, they would have been armed. See, that's the whole joke, isn't it? They say that whole thing was planned, and I'm like, are you kidding me? A bunch of conservatives, Second Amendment supporters went in the Capitol without guns, and they think that we organized that? I don't think so. You see, the joke is, conservatives are such bloodthirsty psychopaths, if they had actually planned the insurrection on the Capitol, it would have been way more violent. That's like if Holiday Inn ran an ad that said, if White Lotus took place here, a lot more people would have died. <laughs> Now, let me just say, if I saw Green with a gun, I would definitely be scared, but I refuse to believe Steve Bannon knows how to use one. No one who layers polo shirts is good with a firearm. <laughs> In a way, they'd make fun partners in a buddy cop movie. You could call it... Butt plug. And... Dildo. Butt plug, dildo, in my office now! You two are a real pain in my ass! Voters, including Republicans, made it clear in November that they're tired of all the MAGA weirdness and pro-Trump extremism. If the MAGA movement was a political winner, Trump would be out there taking a victory lap right now. Instead, he's lying around his bedroom like an unused... Dildo. <laughs> this has been a closer look.